funding for Veterans of America, Our Heroes in Uniform, was provided by CSC Federal Credit Union, thanking all veterans who have served or are currently serving. CSC can provide $0 down payment and low closing costs on VA mortgage loans for eligible veterans. By SARTA, where can we take you today? And by the Donovan Veterans Fund. The story of female veterans is as varied as the story of females in all walks of life. I'm Ron Ponder. We're here at the National Veterans Memorial and Museum in Columbus, Ohio. There are challenges and successes of our females in uniform. We're going to show you some of those successes by showing you who some of those female veterans are. Because after all, they serve too. Standing here in the National Veterans Memorial and Museum in Columbus, Ohio, we're going to introduce you to the very first female veteran from the Revolutionary War, Deborah Sampson. Deborah Sampson disguised herself as a man and joined the Patriot Forces during the Revolutionary War. She was the only woman to earn a full military pension for participation in the Revolutionary War. For several years, Samson's true sex had escaped detection in spite of some close calls. She was wounded twice, once on the forehead from a sword, and she was also shot in the left thigh. She took out the pistol ball herself. She was fully discovered as a female a year and a half into her service when she became ill during an epidemic and was taken to a hospital where she lost consciousness. That is where and when it was discovered that Deborah Samson was indeed a female. She received an honorable discharge in 1783. Currently, according to the VA, there are over 1.8 million female veterans. And just as in civilian life, our female veterans are finally gaining the respect and appreciation they deserve. Let's find out from Captain Sheston Wilson, an Army Reservist, how she deals with her military career, three children, a husband, and a career with Johnson Controls. I was 19, no, 18 years old. I was the first of three kids and went off to college. You know, mommy and daddy sent their first baby off to college. And a, two days later, I called home and said, guess what? I'm joining ROTC, which is a program to go into the army. And um, I, was, I was in 10th grade when 9-11 happened. So at that point, I, I didn't know what that meant for me. Um, three years later, I was a freshman in college and I was part of the third class to, to basically contract with the military knowing that I was going to deploy. It wasn't, you know, a 5% chance that I might deploy. It was basically guaranteed you were going to go to Afghanistan or Iraq or both. And so I called home and, and said, I'm joining the Army. I love this. And they said, no, you're not. Uh, they were supporters of the military, but they couldn't support their daughter doing it. And so it was hard for them. And I actually didn't, didn't sign until a year later. Um, that summer, I went to airborne school, which is where you jump out of planes, uh, you parachute out of planes. And my mom and dad got to come down to Fort Benning, Georgia for my graduation. And so they saw a little 19-year-old <clears throat> me running off the drop zone with my parachute and helmet on and just as happy as could be. And so they said, okay, maybe this is for her. And at that point, um, they agreed and, and I contracted. Do most females feel accepted? As a female in the Army, um, in my unit, I felt 100% accepted, part of the team. I think part of that was because I was an officer so that helped. Um, ha as an officer, you have, you have to have respect. Um, some of the enlisted females probably had a harder time than I did, 
but yes, I, I, I felt um, respected and part of the team. How do you gain respect in the military? To gain respect in the military, it really starts with, a big part of it is physical fitness. So how you do on your PT score, your physical training test and your score, and being able to keep up with everybody on runs, uh, road marches, anything like that is how you gain respect. And so as a female, because I was able to perform well in that area, it, it helped gain respect. Um, one of the challenges, though, is that there's two separate scoring criteria for the physical fitness test. There's the male criteria and the female criteria. And so if you max out your score as a female, it's still um, undermined in a sense because, well, that was on the female scoring criteria. And so if there was an even playing field in the sense that everybody had the same criteria, Every, everybody's scores were apples to apples, um, that would help. Sheston met her husband in the military. My husband and I met in the military uh, at Fort Campbell. I remember the day I met him, um, I was being introduced to all the officers in the battalion and <clears throat> I, sh I shook his hand and they said, this is Captain Wilson, or Lieutenant Wilson at the time, um, executive officer of Alpha Company. And I looked up and I looked at his blue eyes and said, all right, Captain Wilson, Adam Wilson, I gotta remember that. And um, yeah, we, we ended up dating uh, before we deployed, and then we deployed for a year. We were on separate FOBs, so we didn't see each separate <clears throat> um, uh, operating bases, basically. So we didn't see each other for the entire year, uh, but we were able to talk a lot. I mean, we, at least we were in the same time zone, um, which helps, but uh, when we got back, he proposed and a year later we got married. And what about having children while in the military? That was part of why I got out of the military. I wanted to have a family, you know, put down roots somewhere, not be moving around every year or two years, which I know is very hard on military families now, um, having to move all the time. And now that I have a family, I have three kids, they're young, uh, four, two and one. I have a newfound respect for female military, uh, females with children, and female spouses of, of military males. Um, because, you know, at, when I was in the military, I was, mm, let's see, uh, 20 to 25, probably, 20 years old to 25 years old. And I, I, didn't, I didn't realize um, the challenges that come with having a family and Many of our female veterans say they share the same experiences when they go out with their husbands, who also happen to be veterans themselves. As a female veteran, um, still serving, mind you, I have found and come across different things in my career. I have found that with leadership and respect and being very versatile and good at my job that I've never had male peers question my abilities, that's for sure. Um, if anything, there's a lot of respect there. But I will say sometimes on the civilian end, um, great example, Veterans Day. My husband currently serves and he's in the Ohio Army National Guard as a recruiter. Um, and we'll be out Veterans Day or different events and they'll thank my husband for his service. However, I've been in longer and my husband being self-aware is like, you might want to thank my wife for her service. And he's very, very good. He's a good listener. He's fabulous. And it's, it's an interesting notion to think that, you know, I will be overlooked in the room or even at an interview with an employer and if I didn't blatantly state that on my resume it wouldn't necessarily be a question that came up. I think that as a female veteran we need to continue to lead by example and be strong and embody the values of our service branch. For me that's leadership, that's loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. And I think embodying those and everything that we do not just while well, we're in uniform but out of uniform is is necessary. So in the event that uh, you know a woman feels like, hey, you know, hey, I serve too. Speak up about it. Be vocal about it. Don't be ashamed of that. Like, you know, you dress in the same uniform, you do the same tasks, you do the same things. And I just say be proud. According to the Department of Defense, there are currently 63 female generals. Female generals? Yeah, female generals. And I had the pleasure to meet one. 
Um, you know, I grew up in a military family. My grandfather served in the Navy, and my dad was in the United States Air Force. Uh, he served uh, during the Cuban Missile Crisis. He was in the nuclear missile silos during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, so I kind of grew up in a military family. Um, and uh, uh, in my hometown I grew up, and uh, we always would go to the Memorial Day parades and everything like that. And uh, so had I not gotten to college, I would have joined the Army. And, but instead I went to, the Army, or went to college first, and, uh, and then I joined the Army shortly thereafter. Yeah, I listed in the Army in 1987. I had been in college for a little over a year. Um, and um, I enlisted and I went to basic training at Fort Dix in New Jersey. They don't do that there anymore. Um, and then I came back and I joined ROTC at Millersville University in Millersville, Pennsylvania. And I spent my time in ROTC and got my commission in ROTC. And I went on active duty uh, for about five, six years altogether. Um, from there, I came back and I got promoted uh, about a year later. Just like any promotion board, you put your packet in for a promotion. Uh, there are certain criteria that, they, that you have to meet. Uh, you have to uh, be an Army War College graduate out from Carlisle's War College. Um, usually you have to have brigade command historically. Uh, you have to be educationally qualified and you have to be medically ready. So you have to be medically fit and uh, meet all the criteria everybody else does. You have to pass a PT test and meet height and weight and, uh, and your packet goes before a board and, um, and that board selects the people to be general. Uh, then you have to be confirmed by the Senate and, uh, and nominated and then confirmed by the Senate before you finally become a one star. I never thought in a million years I'd ever be promoted to one star. I, you know, I've got to do some amazing things in the military at, at all levels of my service. Um, uh, and so uh, Lieutenant General Lucky, who's the USAR commander, who's uh, the boss of my boss, Major General Lee's boss, General Lucky, uh, called me and said that I had been selected. Um, and I was, I was shocked. I, you know, I never thought I'd ever get here. It was very wonderful for me to hear that. Obviously, you're excited, right? And, uh, but I, I never dreamed in a million years I would have ever been selected to be a general in the United States Army. Yes, females have played a valuable role in protecting our nation, female warriors. Just like in World War II, when females flew for us. So over 25,000 women volunteer for this service. A little over 1,000 are selected, including Nadine. They flew successfully throughout the war. All, every type of airplane, anywhere they needed them to go. 38 of these ladies lost their lives in crashes during the war. But because the WASPs were not officially part of the military service, if a WASP died in the service of her country, her body was sent home at family expense. The military service would not even allow American flag to be draped off in the coffin of a fallen wasp. Toward the end of the war, they start drawing down, the male pilots start coming home. They see women in flight positions. So they petition a congressman, Congress passes a bill disbanding the wasps. And in those days, that was indeed an accomplishment from our ladies in uniform. Well, not totally in uniform yet. Because they are not officially part of the military service, they receive no retirement, no benefits, and no honors. And it wasn't until the 1970s that Congress passed a separate bill granting these ladies veteran status so they could get their health and medical benefits. And it wasn't until President Obama came into office that he invited the 300 survivors at that time to the White House. Three of them actually showed up and presented them all with a Congressional Medal of Freedom which is the first honors they'd received for anything they did during the war. And today, of course, we have some outstanding female combat pilots. And when our soldiers and sailors get wounded on the battlefield, they have access to the greatest care in the world. Just ask Captain Leela Powell. I started nursing school while I was in high school, taking the classes, the prerequisites, prerequisites at the University of Akron, and then I came out of school, went to the University of Akron, took the prereqs for nursing, then I went to Summa St. Thomas School of Nursing, got my two-year degree, then started working at Akron General, did the bridge program at the University of Akron to get my bachelor's degree in nursing. And that was in 2001 when I graduated from the University of Akron. 
After I joined the military, I went to BOLC, which is the Basic Officers Leadership Course. That was in San Antonio, Texas. Then I deployed to Iraq in 2015 with the 948th um, Forward Surgical Team out of Michigan. Currently, I transferred to the 352nd Cache out of California for deployment to Honduras. How do females fit in? How is the camaraderie in Captain Powell's reserve unit? Camaraderie in my unit when I deployed was amazing because we're in this fight together and we want to come home together. So we try to make everything good for ourselves together. So we stick together to get a mission accomplished because if the mission isn't accomplished for one, is it, it isn't accomplished for any of us. So if we need to set up the hospital, we have to do it together. And when I was deployed there, we were a forward surgical team that was split. So there was only eight of us. So everyone chipped in and it just brought us closer together because we all knew we were working hard. We all knew we had a common goal. We had a saying that was embrace the suck. It was hot, we were tired. Sometimes we would get several patients constantly for days. We would be tired and we just had to stick together and get through and it just really brought us close together. There was times when we couldn't shower, times when we couldn't wash our clothes, so we just all stunk together. We just, we just did it all together, so. Was it hard for Captain Powell to leave her family when she was deployed? It was hard to leave family. I did feel like I was, um, turning my back on my children, on my family, when they needed me. Um, I know I raised my children to be strong and I do have two very amazing and strong ladies, but we are very close and to just up and leave for a year and knowing that they had things coming in their life. My oldest daughter was pregnant. My youngest daughter was getting ready to graduate from college, two things that I missed. I feel like I was putting them through heartache and pain because they were very torn that I was leaving. My grandkids didn't understand. It was very difficult. Is it important for females to be in the military? It is important for women to be in the military because we have just as great of things to offer as men do. And I think it keeps balance. We look at things from different perspectives and we add different touches to the military and we're a great asset just as men are. Being a nurse, they come into the EMT and sometimes we are not able to save them. And there was a soldier in particular that we couldn't save. And, um, we took his wallet out, and in his wallet, he had pictures of his children and his wife. And Captain Powell's civilian life mimics her life in the military as she works in the emergency room of a hospital in Akron, Ohio. My individualistic mentality is definitely something that helps me be who I am because when people say, you can't, you won't, you shouldn't, I say I am, and I do. We have to show the same respect to our female veterans that we show to our male veterans, and we have to continually show our appreciation for the jobs they do and the sacrifices they make. Sharon Lane is just one example of gallant females sacrificing, just as gallant male members of our military have sacrificed as well. Sharon Lane is a native of Canton, Ohio, and she's a graduate of Altman School of Nursing, and she sacrificed her life during the Vietnam War. Sharon Lane is a native of Canton. She graduated from Canton South High School in 1961. She wasn't sure what she wanted to do with her life, but by September she had enrolled in the Altman School of Nursing, and she graduated in May of 1965. She worked here at Altman in the uh, obstetric department with the pregnant women. She did not care to work in the nursery. She, the little babies were not her thing. 
And then about two years into that, she decided that that was becoming mundane and very routine. Sharon Lane was in Vietnam. Um, she worked in a hospital there. And interestingly enough, she worked on the Vietnamese unit. So she took care of injured Vietnamese people and prisoners of war. There were many nurses that served in Vietnam, but Sharon Lane was the only nurse that was killed by hostile fire. She was in the theater 51 days before she was killed. Sharon typically worked the, the midnight shift. So she was on the midnight shift. The unit was full, there were 40 patients. So she was making her rounds on those 40 patients. And as they were all settled down, she sat down just to get, take a little break, to be honest with you. In shrapnel, a bomb came into the hospital and shrapnel cut her on her jugular vein and she died instantly. Yes, Sharon Lane sacrificed her life for us. And I believe not only is it the military person who's sacrificing um, their daily life by serving, and some pay the ultimate price, but it also is the family left behind that is paying um, a price daily because they miss their loved ones. I think it's necessary for Altman uh, to place a statue here to honor her. Several years ago, we opened Valor Homes, which is for homeless men. And there has been a gap in that. More females are in the military. More females come out, and generally they have the children with them. And they have been a forgotten group. So when this, as you mentioned, partnership came forward to me, it was a no-brainer, folks. This is a gap that needs to be filled. We need to be able to provide these people with resources and housing and food, and more so than that, hope and opportunity. They need to understand that this is a community that cares and is willing to bring resources to bear to help them build a better life for themselves and their children. We know that female veterans are a growing population that have no resources. Once they come out of the military, they're really on their own. They've learned a certain discipline in a certain way um, that they live their lives while they're in the military, and suddenly they're out here, and many of them are winding up homeless without the resources, and many of them are winding up with children. A lot of our female vets are coming back with MST, which is military sexual trauma. Um, heard anywhere from 40% to 80% um, are, you know, under-reporting. Um, so it is, unfortunately, it's something that's happening too often. Um, they're not reporting it due to shame, due to not being believed, and um, they're coming back traumatized and they're not presenting uh, at the VA. It's about four in 10 female vets actually even access one benefit from the VA. Uh, we have to do better than that, and that's actually increased in the last five years. So we've started the trend the right way, but four in 10 is completely unacceptable. That's still a failing grade. As the first female Summit County Executive and the first female County Executive in the state of Ohio, my heart naturally goes out to those who are in need, and especially those that have served our country so well and in such a meaningful way. Several years ago, we created Valor Homes here for men, and now we have the, upper, the ability to create the Summit Liberty House, which will house women and children right here in Summit County, and give them that hope and that opportunity and know that there is a different way of life and there are people and organizations and companies here that are here to help. This is the Liberty Home of Summit County. This is a permanent supportive housing program for the female vets. It's four units with two bed, two uh, bedrooms. So we'll be able to serve female vets because they often bring children, which creates a whole nother layer of um, potential barriers to um, getting out of homelessness, to finding employment, and to getting yourself back on track. So it will be wraparound services. We're gonna offer all the services that we offer our male veterans, plus more. This should have been done a long time ago. But the fact is, is we're now doing something about it. So it's, it's a start. I'll say that about it, it's a start. And how do some men in the military, especially those in leadership, feel about women service members. I think it's immeasurable, is the way I would describe it. The, the impact of the female uh, soldier, sailor, airman, marine, coast guard, as leaders or as enlisted and non-commissioned officers, 
it's, it's just been amazing. And, and uh, I've been able in 35 years to watch as we've given more and more opportunity to our female teammates and, and just watch them totally be inspirational leaders and take care of their, their troops, so to say, and accomplish the missions that we give them. But this new day in America has shown that our Constitution is indeed inclusive of females, whether fighter pilots or astronauts, surgeons, moms, wives, and generals. The military has definitely shown that the abilities of our females is equal to the abilities of our males. And together, our society and our military has benefited from including all Americans in our quest to keep America the greatest country in the world. Yes, we live in the greatest country in the world, the United States of America, and we've got the greatest military in the world. But it wouldn't be such without the contributions of many female veterans and service members in our military, because after all, they serve too. Funding for Veterans of America, Our Heroes in Uniform, was provided by CSE Federal Credit Union, thanking all veterans who have served or are currently serving. CSE can provide $0 down payment and low closing costs on VA mortgage loans for eligible veterans. By SARTA, where can we take you today? And by the Donovan Veterans Fund.